In this tutorial, we're going to look at some of the advanced triggering options that are available in the LaCroix Voyager USB 3.0 protocol analyzer. One of the more powerful aspects of the Voyager system is our ability to trigger on a sequence of events. So let me take you through the process of creating a sequence. We'll start with a SCSI block command. All the SCSI commands are supported, as I mentioned previously. Now, one of the most common events that you'll see in USB 3.0 is a read 10. We support both bulk only as well as the new USB attached SCSI. This device I'm working with is a bulk only device. SCSI commands are only sent in one direction, from the host to the device. How is the device supposed to respond with a data packet? I can select the data packet header item. I'll drag it over underneath the read 10. I'll now go to the read 10 event. I'll double click to open it. Go to the actions tab. Here you'll see advance the sequence, which I choose close the window. Now the analyzer has been instructed to wait for a read 10 and then advance the sequence to the next state. I can right click and quickly choose to trigger. Now I'm essentially created a sequential trigger. Think of each of these boxes as a state machine. The analyzer will wait for the read 10. When it sees the read 10, it'll move to the next state. It'll wait for the DPH. When it sees the data packet header, then it will trigger the analyzer. Let's say we want to make this trigger even more precise. Well, we can come in as I did earlier and specify the address the endpoint and the direction. I'll disable the TX, which means that this data packet header must be seen on the RX or receive channel for the host. I'll close the window and now we've created a smarter trigger. Anytime a read 10 is sent by the host, he's going to be looking for a data packet in, in the in direction from the device. What would make this even more interesting is if we could trigger on the latency between this read 10 from the host and the device response with the data packet. We can do this by selecting timer event from the new event menu. You'll notice the timer event appears in the holding area. I'm going to drag it over to the state 2. I'll open the timer resource and you'll see it allows me to specify any interval, several seconds, several milliseconds, all the way down to four nanoseconds. Say I wanted to trigger on command latency that exceeded, say, 500 microseconds. I would enter 500 here. And now I will set this event to be the trigger. I will turn off the trigger on the data packet header and instead restart the sequence. This creates a simple looping trigger. So the analyzer will wait for a read 10, then it'll move to this state. If it sees a data packet header, it will restart and wait for another read 10. Or if 500 microseconds elapses, it will trigger. Anytime you have more than one event in a state, it creates a OR condition. Whichever event occurs first will be executed. Let's go ahead and hit OK. I'm going to hit record. The analyzer has triggered. You'll see the data is uploading now. Now I'm going to decode these operations to the SCSI level. I'm going to go ahead and hide the link commands, hide the NAC transactions. And if you scroll over, you'll notice that the analyzer automatically calculates a lot of command metrics for common SCSI operations such as response time and latency, that is the time between the command being sent and the first data packet being received. This is exactly what we just triggered on. If I now go to the trigger point, it'll take me to the first operation that had a latency more than 500 microseconds. These, of course, are all read 10 operations, and we've been able to very quickly identify the exact operation that exceeded our latency target. I'll show you how you can manually confirm this timing measurement. We'll open the read 10. 
we'll open the first transfer that has the data packet out. That's the command going out from the host. By shift clicking, I can put a start marker in the trace and control shift click will put an end marker. This allows us to do what we call a quick timing measurement. We have a persistent timing calculator that appears in the bottom of the display that will always show the start to end delta. And in this case, it's 577 microseconds. So timing based triggers are very useful in USB 3 and you can use this same approach to trigger on other timeout conditions at the link layer as well as the protocol layer. Now if you're going to be using a trigger frequently, go ahead and save it as the default. It will open up this trigger every time you open the recording resources dialog. You can use the save button to store any custom recording options as a file that you can then share with a group or recall later. You would just use the load button to open a saved recording options file. In fact, we include several samples that you may take a look at to see other ideas on how to make triggering more effective in your debug efforts. Please download the next tutorial for more tips and tricks on the Voyager Analyzer.